Welcome back everyone to chapter 13. This is section number two where we're going to finish out the rest of calculus really on these vector valued functions, right? So in, in section one, we did limits and continuity on these vector valued functions. Here I would like to talk about derivatives and integrals for vector functions. Also talk about a little bit of these properties right, for vector calculus. And then finally, we're going to do a little bit of practice, but the majority of this is going to come in class. All right, so calculus time, right, a derivative. So let's suppose that we have some vector function uh, with components f, g, and h, and these are all differentiable functions, right? It makes sense to take the derivatives of them. Then you can take the derivative of our vector function, and the claim is this is just, well, kind of what you would guess. It's going to be the derivative of the x component, the derivative of the y component, and the derivative of the z component all put together in a nice vector function. This is the derivative of our vector function r. Similarly, right, we can go the other direction, right? So if I have, again, this vector function, and these are integrable functions, right? So we can take the integrals of these, they make sense, all that good stuff. Then we can define the integral of this vector function. Uh, and this is going to be, again, kind of exactly what you would expect. So we're going to do the definite integral from a to b of f of t dt. Then the definite integral from a to b of g of t dt. And then the definite integral from a to b of h of t dt. So you just integrate each component, and that will be the overall integral. Now, likewise, just like we have uh, a definite integral, you can also define an indefinite integral, and it's exactly what you would expect. All right, now technically, they have all these formal definitions, just like we did in Calc 1, right? So when I really say, you know, r prime of t, this is technically a limit as h goes to 0 of h of t plus h minus r of t divided by h, right? So this has something to do with slope again. And so this is the formal definition. But then we remember we learned all these rules that were really nice, like power rules and product rules, chain rules, quotient rules, things like this, which are really nifty. Likewise, when I do an integral here, right? This is a limit of a Riemann sum. So we're doing limit as n goes to infinity summing up really kind of the almost areas of rectangles, but now that in space, this is maybe harder to visualize. And this is r of t sub i star, and then times some width of these rectangles, some delta t, right? And so this is the technical rigorous definitions. Uh, but again, we're not really gonna use those in these, this class. You should know that they exist and that they're out there. But more or less, this just comes down to, well, everything that we did in Calc 1, we're more or less going to do three times here in Calc 3, right? So we're going to take the integral of more or less every piece. So let's get a little practice with this, right? So let's consider these functions, a uh, nice vector function here, uh, t cubed, sine of t, and e to the 3t, and I'd like to figure out the derivative. So again, using our definition, this just says, well, take the derivative of each piece, slap it together in a vector, and you're done, right? So, okay. The derivative, r prime of t, r prime of t, is going to be equal to, well, you take the derivative of each piece. So 3t squared sine of t becomes cosine of t. And then e to the 3t, well, the derivative of e is itself. And then chain rule, so we multiply by the derivative of 3t, which is 3. And of course, we could rearrange this and simplify. But again, we're just using all of our skills for derivatives that we brought up in Calc 1 and Calc 2 to be able to take the derivatives of these vector functions. So again, kind of just rearranging, making this 3 go out front, and that would be my final answer, the derivative of this nice vector function. Okay, likewise, an integral, right? So I have the integral from 0 to pi. Same vector function here, right? So let's go ahead and integrate these things. So let's go ahead and integrate t cubed. Well, this is going to be t to the fourth, and then we're going to have a one fourth out in front, right? So, and of course, this is an antiderivative. So if you kind of go backwards, you should get to where you started, right? Take the derivative, get back to where you started. Uh, the integral of sine will be negative cosine. Again, if you take the co derivative of cosine, you get back to where you started. And the, uh, the integral of e to the three t well, that's going to be e to the 3t, but now multiplying by 1 third out in front. Again, take the derivative, you'll get back to where you started. And now we evaluate from 0 to pi, 
right? And so I'm gonna evaluate each one of these pieces at zero and at pi and subtract the difference. So, okay, when I evaluate at pi, we're gonna have one fourth pi to the fourth. Uh, when I evaluate cosine at pi, well, that's negative one. So negative negative one will be positive one. And then this is gonna be one third e to the three pi. Not very beautiful, but okay. And then subtract away when I evaluate at zero. So, okay, t to the fourth is gonna be zero times a fourth, still zero. Cosine of zero is one. So with that negative sign out there, that's gonna be negative one. And then let's see, one third and e to the zero. So e to the zero is going to be one. So that's just gonna be one third. And so my final answer is going to be one fourth pi to the four, and then one minus negative one, right? One minus negative one, so that's gonna be two. And then I have this crazy thing, one third e to the three pi, and then I subtract away a third, subtract away a third. So we know how to add and subtract vectors, right? So that's all we're doing here. All right, so basically again, we're just integrating each component and then subtracting just like we would in Calc 1, uh, but we're doing that three times, right? One for each component. Okay, now with these derivatives and with these integrals, there's a bunch of rules that come along with them. And so I wanna give you these rules here. And so, and it's a lot of the rules that you would kind of expect, they're related to our Calc 1 rules. So if you take the derivative of the sum of two vector valued functions, well, that's gonna be the same thing as if you take the derivative of each one of these. So u of t plus the derivative of v of t. And again, both of these are vector functions here. I'm gonna go ahead and denote these kind of from now on, u prime of t and v prime of t. And I'll try my best not to forget my arrows to represent that, hey, these are vector functions. So you can just take the derivative of each piece. Likewise, there's a constant multiple rule, which says that, hey, you can kind of factor out constants and then take the derivative of your vector valued function. Again, just like in Calc 1. Now there are product rules. So this is a scalar function times a vector function, and you can get your kind of the product rule that you would expect. So the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. And again, this right here is scalar multiplication. Now, when it comes to vector multiplication, right, we know two different methods. We know a dot product and we know a cross product. And the claim is, well, both of these have a product rule that you would kind of expect. So, okay, we're gonna have u prime of t, the derivative of the first times the second, and that times there is the dot product plus the first times the derivative of the second. And that again, the multiplication here is the dot product. And likewise with a cross product. So if you have, you wanna take the derivative of a cross product of two things, well, we're gonna have the derivative of the first times the second. And now the times here is the cross product plus the first times the derivative of the second. Remember with the cross product, right, you can't flip the order of this product, right? So the cross product is not commutative. So it is important that the u comes first in each one of these cases. u prime of t cross v of t plus u of t cross v prime of t, right? So that is important. And then finally, one rule for a chain rule, right? So we have u of f of t, f of t is again some scalar function. We have a chain rule kind of like you would expect. So this is gonna be the derivative of the inside times u prime of f of t. So again, kind of you take the derivative of the outside, leave the inside alone, then multiply by the derivative of the inside. And so the derivative here, right, so this is scalar times a function. So this is scalar multiplication. Sometimes with the scalar multiplication, right, we don't actually even do the dot here because this is like the dot product. So sometimes these ones, they don't have the dots just to really emphasize that this is scalar multiplication. And then when you have the dots, it's the dot product. And when you have the X's, this is the cross product. Okay, well, 
Uh, these are all theorems, right? You can prove any of these, and the claim is the proofs are extremely sad, right? So <laughs> in order to clear my conscience, uh, and I don't want to go over the proofs of these things with you guys, but I want you to recognize, I think it is important to realize that there are proofs, right? This is not something you have to take my word for. There's a mathematical reason why these things exist. And so this is the proof of C. So this is the cross product, sorry, this is the product rule between a scalar function and a vector function. And so this goes through all of the steps, right? So the definition of U, definition of scalar multiplication, definition of vector derivative, right? So each one of these steps is logical and kind of follows from the step previous. And there at the very end, you can see that we'll get F prime of T times the vector U of T plus F of T times U prime of T. So this does work out. Uh, the theorem is true and we can prove it. Right, but again, it's very mind-numbing, these proofs. It's kind of just moving things around. It's somewhat sad. What we really want to emphasize in this class, as usual, right, is how do we actually use these things? So if you had this example right here, and let's suppose that I gave you just this information. You know that f of one is three. You know f prime of one is negative four. You know what our u function is at one, and you know what u prime is at one. So again, these are now vector functions here. And I ask you to find the derivative of f of t times u of t and evaluate that at 1. Well, you need to know that, again, thanks to our good old uh, product rule, that you would have the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. There we go. And now we want to evaluate this at t equals 1. So maybe everywhere I see t's, let me go ahead and erase these and go ahead and I want to put 1's. Right? So 1, 1, 1, 1. Yeah, let's close my parentheses with blue ones again here. And so now we can see how we have to input these values. So f prime of 1 is negative 4 u of 1 is 3, 0, negative 5. f of 1 is 3. And uh, u prime at 1 is 0, 1, 2. And so let's see, we're going to make this negative 12, 0, and 20, plus 0, 3, 6. Again, this is just doing my scalar multiplication. And now let's do my vector addition. So I'll have negative 12, uh, let's see, 3 and 26. And so that would be my final answer, right? This is the derivative of this product, f of t times u of t, evaluated at t equals 1. So this is how I would actually use that theorem. All right, that is it. Uh, for this video, uh, when we talk in class, we'll be expanding a little bit more. We'll talk about uh, tangent vectors and unit tangent vectors and a lot of things that we can actually apply maybe these derivatives and integrals to. All right, I'll see you then.